Hi, so today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to show you um, our, I guess, meal plan for the day. And today we're going to have pork tacos with a corn salad and fresh guacamole. And we're going to make homemade tortillas from our sourdough starter. Um, and so we're going to have all that in this one video. So let's get started. Let's get started. <laughs> What I'm going to do is we're going to grind some fresh wheat. We're going to use about a cup and a half of kamut and we're going to use about a half a cup of soft white berries and we're going to go ahead and grind those up so we get about a total of three cups of flour. going to give me about three cups of flour. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to put the three cups of the flour in here. And while she gets the um, dough started for the tortillas, I'm going to go, go ahead and start dicing uh, onion to make our corn salad and our guacamole. So to the tortillas, I'm going to add about one and a half teaspoons of salt. quarter cup of water and a quarter cup of oil. And I'm going to pour that right in. And I'm going to go ahead and just start mixing it so I can get a gauge for the texture of that. Okay, and meanwhile, I'm going to use Bubbles, our sourdough starter. I'm going to use about a cup of this. I was just going to show you, um, you can see last night after I fed him, he rose up to the level here. I think you can see that. And then um, he's starting to come back down. So he's ready to be used and ready to be fed. cup it looks like that's okay it'll still work just the same and then I just have this little scrapings left that's all I'm going to need to feed for the next round for tomorrow Ooh, these onions are strong making my eyes water all right that's gonna go in there one of these just to get that out. <laughs> Strong one, yeah. then we'll have to do the trick. All right, so we're actually going to soak these onions in ice water for how long? 10-15 mm -hmm. minutes. 10-15 minutes and what that does is it actually takes a lot of the bite out of the onion, gives it a lot more mild flavor since they're going to be raw Since onions. they're going to be raw onion and guacamole and our corn salad. I'm going to mix that up. So for the tortillas, you can uh, make these the night before, which will help, the, the sourdough starter will help break down all the gluten. If you have any kind of sensitivities to that, you'll want to make these the night before. But if I just let these sit for an hour or two until we're, it's time to serve the dinner, then this will be just perfectly fine for our family. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Let that work its magic. After this all incorporates, um, then I'm going to let it knead for about three minutes or so. All right, now I got all the onions done. Um, they're all soaking in ice water. I'm just gonna set those to the side here. I'm gonna start working on 
the corn salad. We went ahead and prepared the corn. Um, we grilled it to get a little bit of a char on the outside, but then we had to chill it. Um, we didn't get any video of that, unfortunately. But it, we have the corn in the refrigerator. It's uh, still on the cob. But as you can see, we have the corn with a little bit of char on the corn just for extra flavor. You roasted that with olive oil and It was roasted salt. with olive oil, seasoned salt, and pepper. crushed red pepper. Um, basically, we, we husked the corn but left the husk attached. We oiled it with olive oil, then put seasoned salt, crushed red pepper, and then put the husk back over the corn and then roasted it on the grill. Um, once I roasted it on one side for about 10 minutes on a medium heat, flipped it, did 10 minutes on that side, and then I cut the husk off completely and roasted it directly on the rack to get some of the char on there. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut all the corn off of all the cobs. Okay, I'm going to put it back on to the kneading. I wanted to turn it off so you could hear what he was saying about the corn. Okay, this looks like it's coming together here. Okay, so I was just going to let you know with the um, pork, what we did is we had a pork loin um, and we put that in our slow cooker and then we put green enchilada sauce on top of that and we salt and peppered it and we did fresh lime juice and some cilantro um, and then that's just going to slow cook and be able to be shredded and we'll be able to use that meat on there also. Okay, that's now formed a nice ball. <clears throat> so that's formed a nice ball there. Oops, a dough. And I'm gonna take a spoon and just kind of break all the corn apart. As you can see, now that the corn is all cut off, we'll break it all apart. And there it is. I'm going to cover this with just a little bit of olive oil and some uh, saran wrap and just let this sit aside all day until we're ready to eat. All right, for now, I'm going to set the corn. Uh, I'm going to put it back in the refrigerator just to keep it cold. If I can find a spot. <laughs> That's always interesting. So we're going to go ahead and use our jalapenos from our hydroponics and I think we're going to do one for the corn salad and one for the guacamole and then we're going to go ahead and get our tomatoes. Looks like we have a few ready. We have a couple red ones and we have these yellow ones which are delicious. All right, I'm going to put all these in just a wash basket. So we ended up uh, getting a couple Roma tomatoes at the market just so that because we didn't have enough tomatoes with the small ones to make the guacamole and the corn salad. So I'm going to go ahead and just rinse all these together, the peppers and all the tomatoes. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the mixer away. I'm going to go ahead and get the tomatoes. Uh, diced up for the corn. So I'm going to pull it back out just so I don't get another bowl dirty. We're just going to dice up all our little tomatoes for our corn salad. I said it right this time. <laughs> and while he does that, I'm going to go ahead and feed bubbles for tomorrow. And we're going to do one Roma tomato in here also. So we'll just get these all diced up. So I normally have um, some extra flour in the freezer, but I've used it all up. So I'm gonna go ahead and grind some flour so that I can feed bubbles. Pour 
pour that in. I just milled this over there. Sourdough doesn't have to be difficult. I find a lot of mistakes um, are made with not feeding enough flour um, and then it gets really liquidy and I know when you put it in your refrigerator it tends to get much more sour so you usually have to feed it a pretty heavy feeding for a day or two if you want to use it in something sweet. This is the texture or the consistency that I like. I like to have it in kind of a, a clump, but I actually want to use the rest of the flour that I milled. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that in and add a little more water to it. Plus I want more starter than that for recipes in the future. I use the filtered water from the fridge have chlorine in it. All right, now that I got the tomatoes done for the corn salad, I'm gonna go ahead and dice up the one of the jalapenos that we just picked. bubbles into a new jar now that he's all mixed up. In our family, um, we do make sourdough bread, but we actually prefer using our sourdough starter for all the other recipes even more than we like the bread. Um, we still eat the bread a lot, but we use the sourdough for all these other recipes much more often. Then I like to mark it with his name. Well, I just usually draw a little bubble on his canister and I put a line about where it is so I know that he's still living and growing. All right, this is our corn salad so far. We have all the tomatoes, the corn, and the jalapeno. Um, I think we are, a, I think it's been a, enough time for these onions soaking. Um, so what I'll do is I will drain all the water off. Just give this corn salad a little mix just to get everything stirred in. I'm going to take these since they got washed out of the colander. Just pour our onions through. Give them another rinse. Give them another rinse. That's I think there might still be some ice in there, so maybe this will melt that last little bit of ice. I'm just going to put this back in the bowl for now. There we go. I'm going to make the um, dressing for the corn salad. So I'm going to do about a quarter cup of olive oil. I'm going to use about a cup of these onions in the corn salad. Um, this ended up giving us almost three cups of diced onions. Um, I'm probably not going to use all of these for our two recipes today. So I will freeze some of these. It's, we like to have diced onions on hand, so the freezer is the best place because they last quite a while in there. We can use them for all kinds of recipes. So I'm gonna put some fresh ground pepper. Some salt in there. Um, I probably will put end up putting more salt on after we taste it, um, but I just wanted to not put too much in because I know that the corn was seasoned already. And then while you get that out, if you give me the juice of one lime in here, that'd be awesome. A lot of these recipes call for uh, mayonnaise or sour cream. Um, I'm not going to use any cream today just because uh, our family has lactose sensitivity. If I had some more of my plain yogurt that I didn't just use all up, 
um, that I would use some of that instead. The juice of one lime. I may end up using more olive oil, so I'm using olive oil instead. Okay, and then I'm going to put about a tablespoon of honey in that. The last thing I need to cut up for the corn salad is some cilantro. Um, I'll also need some of that for the guacamole that we're making. So I'm going to go ahead and cut up a, I don't know, uncut, it's probably about a cup. A big handful. A big handful. <laughs> Rinse that. I'm just going to go ahead and pull the big stems off. They tend to get a little bit bitter if you leave the big stems on. And if you're one of the people that don't like cilantro, you can always use parsley here as well. I've seen people use basil also. I'm going to have to go ahead and do um, kind of a medium chop on the cilantro. chopped up small enough to kind of incorporate throughout the whole dish. So Matt usually does a lot of the chopping and cutting around here. He doesn't like it when I use knives because I cut myself <laughs> too much. I'm more of the baker, I guess, and grains. <laughs> okay, after it's all chopped up, I got about, it looks like about a half a cup of cilantro. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use about two thirds of this about in the corn salad and then the rest will be for the guacamole. All right, there's that. And then we're just going to give this a quick stir, get everything mixed up before we put in the, the dressing that Kara just made. We're going to go ahead and pour in the dressing that she made. All right, and give this a, a good stir. And then once I get all this stirred in, all mixed up, incorporated, I'm just gonna put this back in the fridge just so all the flavors can marry together. Um, just make sure you scrape down the side of the bowl, get it all together. All right, we're gonna go ahead, it's all mixed in, I got it all pushed down. We're gonna take a piece of saran wrap, put it over the, the top of the bowl. Saran wrap doesn't like me. <laughs> and we're just gonna set it in the fridge for right now. I'm gonna do the salsa guacamole, I guess, sort of. It's not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, so we got the onions in here. We went ahead and I took uh, probably an extra cup of them out and just put them in the freezer. Um, so the onions are diced up in here that we diced earlier and soaked. I'm going to go ahead and put the cilantro in. Hopefully that's not too much cilantro. We only have three avocados. So hopefully they're all good. Avocados. Hopefully they're all good. Sometimes we tend to get some bad ones. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and do the jalapeno and the tomatoes first, and then we'll get the avocados. So I'm just going to dice up the jalapenos and the tomatoes just like we did for the um, corn salad. We're in currently in Ohio right now, so avocados are not hmm. quite as easy to find nice and fresh as they are when we're in the Southwest or the Florida avocados are really good too. Avocados from Mexico. And that was Cody. <laughs> All right, we'll put the jalapenos in. That's when you know it's good commercial branding. <laughs> yeah. Cut the stem area off of these. I really don't care to have that hard stem in my guacamole. So we keep saying guacamole, but it is more of a guacamole salsa because we kind of make a, like a fresh pico and then mix in the lime and the avocados and kind of make a guacamole salsa. This 
is the part of the chopping that Kara tends to cut her fingers on. So all the tomatoes are all sliced or diced up. All the tomatoes are all diced up. Just put those in the bowl. Spill them on the countertop. It's all good. Mm -hmm. It was clean. Give it a little stir. I'm just going to go ahead and um, salt that while he gets the avocados out. Nope, nope. not avocado, lime. Okay. When he gets the lime out and then the avocados. <laughs> um, I like to put the salt on there to help the juices start releasing from the tomatoes. Definitely the lime is in the fridge. Avocados don't go in the fridge. Yeah, I guess. That was a lot of lime juice. It's okay, lime and salt is the best part. <laughs> And then I'm also going to put some fresh cracked pepper. Okay, so I'm going to do the avocados. I'm going to cut them in half around the pit. And then just give them a little twist. And then just take your knife, put it in a little bit, and pull the pit out. Um, we've had some of those avocado cutting we've had a few of them none of them really seem to work all that great um, I have always just preferred a knife and then just take a spoon and scoop out the avocado and then I'll just set the top back on while I get the rest of them prepped that just keeps them they turn brown pretty quick um, if you know avocados you know it gets brown really quick so I'll pull them out and then just set them face down that helps keep them from turning too fast before we get them in the lime juice. So far two of them are good. And that action right there is one of the things I ended up cutting my <laughs> wrist on because yes. the pit didn't come out because the avocado was not fully ripe all the way. That was a little seed. Mm, seed dried up a little bit. So yeah, this, this one. one isn't as good. The this one's two. not as good, and it left a little bit of the, the the shell of the pit. So what we'll do, we'll just scoop it out first, throw it away, and we'll scoop out these last two avocados. It still looks good. This last one that I cut open, it it looks like it was about just about ready to have to throw away in a in a day or two so we're making this in perfect timing <laughs> we do really do like spending a lot of time in the kitchen together so that's why we kind of wanted to show you a different a different aspect of our kitchen. traveling camping cooking life together all right so i'm going to take all the shells off now and just kind of slice these up a little bit. Um, it just makes mashing them in the guacamole salsa a little easier. So I'll just slice them one direction and just do a quick chop the other direction. Those are all chopped up. Um, we'll get those put in to here. Um, funny story, I actually didn't really like avocados until maybe two, two maybe three years ago um, until I had them in guacamole. And once I had them in like a fresh guacamole, um, I like guacamole. <laughs> I really still don't care for avocados plain by themselves. Um, they just have a very distinct taste. So 
Um, in salsas or guacamoles and stuff like that, I really do, I like them now. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and put these in here. All right. It's the lime and the salt. It tastes good. All right, I'm going to use our little, I guess, meat masher. Is that what it's called? I don't know what it's called. Paper chef? Yeah, this one's paper chef. We'll have to look up and see what it's actually called. We'll have to link that in one of our, we use it a lot. So we'll have to find out what it's called and see if we can find a link for it. I use it for meat, I use it for fruits, vegetables, dog food, everything. <laughs> This is my potato masher. <laughs> I use it for potatoes also. Mashed potatoes. Which is one of Cody's favorites food favorite foods. I still can't get my kids to try the guacamole just because it does kind of look gross once it's all made together, but it's so good. I'll try it. You will? Yeah. Great. On camera? No. <laughs> I'll try it right now. It probably needs more salt. I'm gonna give it a little taste. Mmm. It is very limey. Yeah. You might need just a hair more salt. check on our pork back here it's been on for quite a while and it is all shredding up yum it smells really oh, it good it smells so good okay that's good so here's the pork we did we got it all shredded up here this is the green enchilada sauce that we put on that we slow roasted um, we salt and peppered the pork okay i'm just gonna cover the guacamole stuff, guacamole salsa, guac yes. guac and sauce. What do we want to call it? Salsa hmm. guac. Salsa guac. Salsa guac. Salsa guac sounds good. And put that in That's the fridge. Good. Okay, so we have everything prepped now for our meal, um, except for we need to finish off the tortillas. And when those are ready, we'll go ahead and show you how we do that. Okay, so this tortilla recipe is actually Lisa Farmhouse on Boone's recipe. Um, I'll put a link to her recipe for the tortillas below in the description box. So I just put a little bit of oil on my table here. I think her recipe calls to cut them into 12 um, equal size pieces, but I'm gonna go ahead and do 15 because we like ours a little bit smaller. Um, just gonna knead it just a little bit. And um, if you, it, she calls for this to sit for 12 to 24 hours before you make them and then we like to make them right before we go to eat because they're fresh and they're warm and they're so good so let me just divide these into about 15 equal parts Okay, so I have those in about 15 equal pieces. I'm just going to roll those in a ball. Set them aside. After the tortilla dough is rolled into the balls, uh, you leave them sit for about a half an hour. Now that they're ready, we'll show you how we make them. So I like to take the dough 
Um, keep it covered until you're ready to use one. So take one of the dough balls and just flatten it slightly. And then we're going to take it to, we have this tortilla press. Now, this is a tortilla press that's also supposed to cook the tortillas, but we don't really use it to cook them, so we just use it as a press. Um, eventually, we might get a new regular press. I'll show you what this, why we don't really use this as a press anymore. Um, we take them and then we'll put them onto our griddle. Um, I put the griddle, it's preheated to about 350 degrees. So this is one that was done with the tortilla press to cook and it kind of just tears the tortilla up a lot. So we don't use it to cook anymore. So we got all the tortillas done and it looks like this tortilla press broke on us so I don't recommend getting one. <laughs> we haven't even had it that long. No, we've only had it. We've only used it a handful of times and like I said we don't even use it on heat because it kind of destroys the tortillas and now it won't even press tortillas so it's probably garbage. <laughs> All right, so the last thing we need to do is we need to crumble up some cotilla cheese. This is the cheese we got. It's a uh, kind of a Mexican queso type cheese. Um, we're just going to use half of it, and then we'll probably freeze the other half for a later meal. So I'm just going to take it and cut half of it off. Put the other half into a bag so we can put it in the freezer. Thank you. And then we'll take this half of the block and we're just going to kind of shred it, or not shred it, we're going to um, crumble it up. Um, it is kind of a dry cheese. And then we'll probably end up putting half of that cheese in the corn salad and then the other half we can just top on top of our tacos. I'm getting hungry, I'm getting excited. <laughs> so you can buy this cheese already crumbled up in a bag. Um, we just really prefer to buy our cheese in blocks. It seems fresher and like sometimes when it's in a bag they put coated cornstarch or something like that around it to keep it from sticking together. We just really like the taste of the cheese when it comes in a solid block or fresh cheese is good. Okay, we're probably gonna put about half to three quarters of what we just shredded up into our corn salad and the rest we'll probably just use for toppings like I was saying. So there's that. Mmm. And the cheese is so good. <laughs> you want a piece? No, I'll wait. I'll wait to eat it in this also. More for me. It's nice and colorful and bright. So now it's time to eat. I'm gonna give our, what we end up calling this? Salsa guac? Yeah. We'll give it a quick stir and give it a taste. It's been in the fridge for mm, couple a hours. couple hours. Mm. It was so good. We hope you enjoyed cooking with us today. And if you like 
what you saw, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and if you would like us to try any recipes, put it in the comments below. And thank you for joining us on our adventure with Greens and Small Places. Goodbye! Bye.